Hi, this is Margie with Flow Motion Education. And in this video, we will be exploring foot resupination. So your foot, um, please go back and watch my video on foot pronation and supination if you haven't already done so. Also, please make sure that you have watched the video on the foot tripod because we will be referring to the foot tripod and this video is about resupination. So it'd be good if you understood what supination was. So in the gait cycle, your foot, ideally, if everything's working great, will pronate, supinate, pronate, supinate. I'm doing a big exaggeration to remind you, pronation arch lowers, supination arch lifts. There's more to it than that. Again, please review the video. There's a whole video on pronation and supination. This exercise is to restore the mechanics of resupination. So we have just in the gait cycle received our mass, pronated the foot, and we're moving in the direction of a rigid lever propulsion foot, but somewhere in between this pronating receive your mass foot, shock absorber, mobile adapter, and the rigid lever propel you forward foot, somewhere in between, we resupinate. We went from pronation, we resupinate, moving in the direction of full supination. So pronation, we start to resupinate, and then we move in the direction of full supination. We will definitely explore full supination, but this is that critical moment of resupinating the foot. And I have yet to see very many people walk through the door of my treatment room who can resupinate their foot. Or if they can do one, rarely seen people who can do both feet. So pretty much everybody I work with gets this exercise. I'm gonna show you the wedge position because it is one of the trickier wedge positions. So you should have three, if you have wedges, you should have two narrows and a wide. I highly recommend the anatomy in motion wedges, but you can use a folded washcloth or you can cut up a yoga wedge. Um, so you're gonna take one of the narrower wedges and it's going to be sloping down. It's gonna come in parallel to the foot and it's gonna be sloping down toward the heel. Very particular about where I want it. I want it under the fifth toe and the fourth toe. And then these long bones are called metatarsals. And we refer to them as the first metatarsal, second, third, fourth, fifth metatarsal. This wedge is going to come in under fourth and fifth toes and fourth and fifth metatarsals, not the second and third. So on the foot, I'm gonna hold it up facing this way. It's sloping down toward the heel. It's parallel to the foot and it's under fourth and fifth toes and metatarsals. That's the first wedge. The second wedge, the wider, the widest wedge or your wider washcloth is going to come in under the foot and it's going to be under the first toe and the first metatarsal. And I think from this angle, you can actually, I'll just tip it slightly. Okay, so the, the narrower one is parallel to the foot. The wider one is perpendicular to the foot, coming in from the inside of the foot under only the first toe and first metatarsal. The narrower one only under fourth and fifth toes and metatarsal. And then the easy one, again, sloping down, it's kind of gonna be perpendicular to the foot, comes in under the inside of the heel. So this is what it looks like. Our focus in this exercise there, this is really a lot of uh, good, benefit out of this exercise for many of your joints, your hip and your knee, but we're gonna be focused on the foot and the focus is going to be getting the talus to rotate away from the midline of the body. We're going to drive the talus via the tibia because in the rotational plane, they're married. 
and we're going to drive the shin bone to rotate away from the midline via the body above. We're gonna to rotate top down, down toward the tibia. And just to remind you, our intention is to get the arch to, you should feel or see, I highly recommend do this one in front of the mirror and you should see the arch lift. And uh, one of the important rules is we have to keep, the big toe ball is gonna to wanna to lift and if it lifts, you're not getting movement within the foot. And we want to get movement within the foot. So we have this funny, fancy wedge position that I just showed a close up. Narrow wedge coming in or parallel to the foot under four and five. Wider wedge perpendicular to the foot comes in under the first toe and the first metatarsal or long bone. Two and three are just hanging out in space. The final wedge comes in from the inside of the foot perpendicular under the heel. So we got some rules in this uh, exercise. Rule number one, and possibly the most important rule for this exercise is that big toe ball does not get to lift. It's gonna want to. I want you to think of hugging the wedge with that big toe ball or the toe knuckle. Not the toe itself, but the, the ball part. It's called technically the metatarsal head. It's this thick knobby bit that's the end of the long bone. It's not part of your toe. I'm going to turn side profile for a moment. Rule number two is hip stays stacked on top of knee, stays stacked on top of ankle. I recommend taping yourself and doing this side profile to a mirror, checking yourself. If you send me a check-in video, I'm gonna want you facing me with the lower extremity tape. I'm gonna want you facing this way so I can make sure you're stacked, hip on top of knee on top of ankle. The tendency is to either bend the knee, no, straight knee. I'm even gonna tell you to lock it. Allow it to lock. Don't be afraid of locking the knee. You will not hyperextend if you are properly supinating your foot. It's just actually impossible. And the other thing that people do that I want you to monitor, as soon as they start the exercise, they unweight the foot, they come off of it. I don't, I don't really even know, I can't even mimic it, but I've seen so many different strategies for unweighting the foot, but no, I actually want your weight on the working foot. So I'm gonna put my wedges back in. And I am going to, um, just introduce the movement. So what we're gonna basically be starting by rotating the pelvis, remembering hip on top of knee and top of ankle. I'm reminding you so many times because everybody unstacks, just about everybody. First movement is just shift your weight on top of the working foot. This is not, I don't literally want you to lift the opposite leg, but you should, you're really on the working foot and the opposite foot, uh, I'm gonna, cue you a little bit on what to do with it. People get very confused. So on the opposite foot, we're gonna practice this first. I want you to lift the heel and I want you to imagine the forefoot has zero friction, zero. So as I rotate the pelvis, the foot just kind of, the opposite foot just kind of comes along for the ride. And I'm gonna just say, it's, it's only got one job and its job is to not impede whatever I'm cueing you to do on the working leg in the body above. So I will be cueing you in a minute to rotate your pelvis. And I've got my heel lifted on the non-working foot and I'm just frictionless sort of pivoting on it. And then we're gonna forget about it, but that's what it does. Remember, it's only job is to not impede the movements I'm cueing you to do. So the movement itself is, you're gonna start by just like I showed you, rotating the pelvis in the direction of the working foot, just exploring, well, how far do I go with ease? I'm not holding back, but you know, kind of go to your edge, see where that is. And then remember your rules, that big toe ball does not get to lift. It hugs the wedge underneath it. And my knee is straight. A lot of people want to bend their knee. I don't really get it, but I've seen it so many times. I'm just going to say, no, knee is straight. So you may notice, look at the dot on my thigh or femur, and you may notice that as I rotate the pelvis, it'll rotate a little bit. It, it, it rotates. You can see the dot 
going in the direction, same direction as my pelvis. I want you to do one more, and when you get to that end range of your pelvis, I want you to imagine the pelvis kind of grabs onto the femur or the thigh bone, and it rotates even further, keeping the big toe ball, hugging the wedge. So you should see my dot. I rotate, rotate, ro I, I rotate the pelvis. The dot will rotate a little bit. I get to pelvic end range, and the pelvic so pelvis grabs and drags the femur around. And then again, we can do our reach to, and this should feel actually quite intense, possibly, in the foot if you are hugging the wedge because you are rotating your talus and your arch is lifting. And I will do a close-up of what that looks like. Okay, I am going to show you a close-up of foot resupination. Uh, side profile, so you can see my arch. I am going to request that if you send me check-in videos, I would love one of a side profile of your foot, actually with no wedges, um, so that I can see what your arch is doing. So if you send a check-in video, full body with wedges facing the camera, full body with wedges, side profile on the dot side or on the outside of the working leg, and then you can either be full body or close up, if, whichever you want. I don't really care of where I can see the arch. And um, please don't use wedges on the one, the, the part of the video where you show me your arch or where I can see your arch. It could be full body. You don't have to do a close up. Um, so I'm going to do the exercise, but I'm going to have this foot, the non working foot, out of the way, only so you can see my arch. Normally, this is where it would be for the exercises. I rotate the body above, but I, that will be hiding the view of my arch. So I, I move all my mass on top of the working foot. This one is just going along for the ride. I move all my mass on top of the working foot. I stack my hip over my knee, over my ankle. My knee is straight, and my rule to myself is the big toe ball must hug the floor or wedge. And I'm going to rotate my upper body toward the foot. And perhaps you see my arch lift and it lowers as I derotate and it lifts as I rotate. And, it, and I'm not cueing myself to contract any muscles to lift the arch. That is just the normal foot mechanics that occur with rotation of the talus.